five, four, three, two, one. Hi guys and girls and welcome back to another video. So in my previous video we ran through the main settings in the DJI Fly app. So to access those main settings as before, the top right hand corner of those three dots will bring up your menu and you can then control your safety, control, camera, transmission and about. So we're not going to cover any more of that in today's video. What we're going to talk about today is the features around the side of the screen. And then we're going to go in finally onto the camera menus and see what options we have for there. So I'm currently indoors today, so it's given me some feedback at the top telling me that my takeoff with caution and that my GPS signals are weak. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to click the icon just to the left of the three dots main menu and that brings us up some information about our batteries. That gives us our battery temperature and once we've been in the air for some time it will also give us our flight time. So if we move on from there to the left of that we have our battery percentage of the battery in our drone and then next to that our amount of satellite feeds we have active. Now it currently says 11 on mine uh, and my GPS signal is weak which is why it is orange because we are indoors. Now just to the left of that we have our obstacle avoidance. Now if this is unavailable due to being in sports mode if I just flick it over to there you'll see that it turns red and notifies us that the obstacle avoidance is turned off. So I'm just going to flick that back over to T for tripod. So to the left of the obstacle avoidance, we have the signal strength between the remote controller and our drone. Now I have had this drop down a couple of bars on me before when going through thick trees and dense foliage, uh, but the video feed has still remained stable and with a good quality image. Now, to the left of that, it does tell us this would normally be where our takeoff permitted and any notifications about taking off an instant flight would show. If we just give a quick click on that, it tells us that our pre-flight check says that we've got no GPS signal, the aircraft will be unable to hover and to fly with caution. Below that, we have some of the settings that we've seen in the main settings which have the return to home altitude, the max altitude, max distance, and then below that the option to format either the SD card or the internal storage, and below that the space remaining. Now the very last item on there, it says photos remaining. Now this will change depending on what camera setting you have. So for example, if we change this up to video at 1080p, it may tell us that we've got about 35, 40 minutes of recording time. If we were to bump that up to 4K at 60 frames per minute, it would give us a lot less than that. So once we're out of that, we can see to the left of that, we have T mode. Now T mode stands for tripod. And this relates to the middle slider switch in between the return to home button and the on and off button. Now, if we flick that over to normal, we can see the end mode shows. And if we go over to sport, it will tell us that not only the sport mode has been activated, but that our obstacle avoidance is off. So I'm just going to flick that back to normal for now and we can move on. So middle left hand side of the screen, we have our auto takeoff. Give it a single click and this window opens in the middle of your screen. Press and hold where it says take off and once it goes fully green the aircraft will take off to an altitude of 1.2 meters and hover for your next command. Below that we have our GPS map. Now if we were to single click on that again it would enlarge up and we'd have a full screen view but I'll just run through a couple of things. So the first item that we see is the H in a yellow circle. Now this is your return to home point. Now this can be moved around and set within this map or you can also just update it to where you currently are by going into the main settings and if we go to safety and update home point. So the arrow in the map represents your drone and because we're so close to each other you can't see the little blue circle that is below that that represents yourself and the controller. I'm just going to minimize that back down and to the left of that we have our height in meters and our distance in meters. Now you can obviously change this from kilometers and feet and imperial 
um, and above those we then have the speeds at which they are happening. So in the bottom middle of the screen we would normally have where the drone is location to the controller and this moves around depending on where you are within your settings. So that's covered the information surrounding the screen so far. Now we're going to come on to our camera menus. So moving on to the camera menus and settings. So at the bottom we have the EV which is currently set to minus one. Now this is your exposure. Now on a dark day you may well have it down something as minus one. But if it's quite a dark day and you want to make it a little bit brighter we could just crank that up. Now if you have the overexposure warning set on your camera settings under the main settings. If we go down there you see overexposure warning is currently on. So if we were to crank that exposure right up, you can see these black and white lines. Now these can be quite distracting when you're flying. So I tend to get this set at the beginning of my flight, bring it down, get rid of all of those lines, but still gives me the exposure on the image that I would like. Once I've got that done, what I do is I hit the little lock symbol next to that, which is our exposure lock. Now that's really handy if you're flying on a sunny day and you've got a little bit of cloud cover and you're flying through that and the changes in the brightness or you're going under shadows of trees then this will keep your exposure locked without the system trying to overcompensate. So next to the exposure lock we have where we can change from our automatic settings into our manual settings. So I'm going to go ahead and click that right now. And you can see we've got two options here. We've got our ISO and we've got our shutter speed. Now, if I click on ISO, you can see we have the range from 100 all the way through to 6400. And on the shutter, we have an impressive 8000. All the way up to a whole 8 seconds. Now, I love having a shutter setting along with my ISO on this drone. It means that I can really control the amount of light coming in. It'd be great if there was an aperture setting as well, but we can understand why that's been held off for the more pro models. So, above the manual and automatic selection, we have the gallery. Now, you can go in here and you can select whether you wanted to see your videos, your photos and if you've marked any favorites out of that selection now if i just pop back to videos the last icon which is on the top left the current little white tick box if i click that that will go to batch select now that will allow us to select a whole day's worth of footage and choose what we would like to do with it so we can either like all of it we can download all of it or we can just trash the lot so as i come back out of there we come back to our main screen so above the gallery, we have our camera shutter button. So if you were to take an image or start or stop your recording, then that's the button you would hit. And then above that, we have our camera menus. The first icon that we have is the photo with a single image. Now this takes an image at 12 megapixels and it is a nice crisp image. You don't want to crank your ISO up really above the four or especially 800 because you will get a lot of noise and you'll spend a lot of time trying to get rid of that in post-production, sometimes unsuccessfully. So after the single 12 megapixel shot, we have our expanded 48 megapixel shot from that 12. And then below that, our smart, which is pretty good feature it will take what it deems to be the best settings for that similar to auto function and then take your image based on that now we have the AEB which we have the option of either three or five and our burst mode which comes in either three five or seven now the last option on the photo menu is timed shot now we do have a wide range of times on here from two seconds all the way up to 60 seconds and what will happen is as soon as you click that shutter button it will start taking a photo at every two seconds until you click stop so i'm going to do that now you can hear that rather than click and it will keep on taking pictures until i ask it to stop like that so we come out of here and then we can go to our video mode now we have the star of the show here 4k at 60 frames per second and what a clear image that delivers now we can drop that frame rate all the way down to 24 frames per second should you wish and that's also available in the 2.7k and the 1080p now if we drop down to hdr 
we can only shoot in 1080p at a max rate of 30 frames per second and this still gives you a beautiful clear video and your footage will come out looking great myself i do prefer the 60 frames per second because it just gives me that bit more maneuverability when it comes to editing now these options are the same for the 2.7k along with the 1080p for the hdr mode so slow motion is the last one on the video mode and that gives us either a slow mo of 120 frames per second at 1080p or 240 frames per second at 1080p. Now unfortunately we won't be able to do the quick shots because you need to be in flight for those but there is plenty of information out there on these already. So we have modes such as boomerang, helix, asteroid and two or three others and they're really great fun to play around with i've had a lot of fun creating these and they're really easy and they're a nice quick share to go out to your followers or even just to your friends on social media now hyperlapse now we won't be able to actually select any of these options because we're not in the air but it does give us four options we've got the free circle course lock and waypoint now they're all fairly self-explanatory as you can see there so i'm not going to spend much time covering those now the last item on our menu is panoramics now again we need to be in the air but for now i can tell you that you get the two options you either get the standard panoramic with the real large wide range of view or you can have what they call the 360 sphere now i really like the sphere it shoots up and it then encompasses you in a kind of globe where you can then zoom in and it's a really nice effect and yet again a real fun share uh, to go out to your friends so you'll find that that is all of the menus and all of the information that we've covered surrounding the screen now so i do hope you've enjoyed the video i hope it's been helpful if you do have any questions please leave them in the comments below i will try to get back to you as soon as i can but aside from that if you could also do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and the bottom right corner below the video that'll be greatly appreciated until next time guys take care